Hi and welcome to video number one in the AutomateTheWeb.net video series where we look at using Microsoft Excel and its hidden programming language VBA or Visual Basic for Applications to automate the Internet Explorer browser. So we might want to do this for a number of reasons. Uh, if you have a data intensive or time consuming task that you want to automate, you can build a super macro, if you will, or a bot to do it for you. And where we have a web component, maybe you have to go to a website and scrape data from it or fill out a form on a web page and submit it. We sometimes call those web bots. If you have Microsoft Excel, you can build those. VBA is a lot like Visual Basic programming language used to create Windows EXE programs, but it's built into Excel. So Excel serves as the host application. The benefit there is that you can just store an Excel file and it essentially becomes a Windows program with a XLSM extension. You can email it to somebody. There's no installation needed if you want to execute the code. But it also assumes that you do have Excel, and it would also be good if you had some basic Excel knowledge, some experience with it, and some, uh, some basic VBA fundamentals would also be helpful, as well as understanding a little bit about HTML. Now, if you go to the website automatetheweb.net, I actually have some uh, course links here, some Udemy courses that I handpicked. If you want to learn a little bit more about Excel, and get a handle on VBA fundamentals, learn a little bit more about HTML structure. AutomateTheWeb.net is going to have a whole lot of videos, different code snippets, how to automate Internet Explorer, to go to websites, scrape data, submit data, um, jump back and forth between Excel and, and various websites. For each one of these videos, the corresponding web page will have quite a bit of reference information for you. So let's jump right in and start building our first web bot. We are going to open up a search engine, search for a term, bring back the results within Excel. Let's start by opening Microsoft Excel. Here, just open a blank workbook. In cell A2, type in auto parts. In cell C1, type in Houston, Texas. Uh, I just made these up. Could be anything. And then open up the Visual Basic Editor in the Developer tab. If the Developer tab isn't showing, just go here to Options, Customize Ribbon, make sure that box is checked and then click the developer tab, click on the visual basic button. It brings up the visual basic editor. First thing we want to do is make sure HTML object library and Microsoft internet controls are checked. If they're not, scroll down, check those boxes. Then we want to go to view and project explorer so that we can insert a new module. We could go through and type this line by line, but for the sake of making this a short video, let's just go to automatetheweb.net, copy and paste this code here. And now let's go ahead and run the program by pressing F5 or the green play button. You can see it opens the DuckDuckGo browser, brings back the search results, it puts all the results from page one here, the links and the descriptions of those links. And I also added some code to determine if it was a Yellow Pages link or not, and if it was, to add those up right here. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but let's say you need to do that. So now let's look at this code module line by line. We'll position our cursor here on the first line and press F8. That is going to step into the code line by line. If I hit F8, I actually instantiate a new instance of Internet Explorer and by hitting F8 again I set its visible quality to true and there it is it pops up I'm just gonna move it over here so we can see everything next time I hit F8 it invokes the navigate method it navigates to whatever string I have within these quotes you could also make this a, a string variable if I hit F8 again you can see the browser does indeed navigate to that page. Now, it, even though it took only a second to bring that page up, that's much too long of a time for the CPU. It already would have ran through this whole line of code. We need to find a way to stop this code and wait for the browser whenever it's busy. And so for that, I like to use a do loop. It says, while the browser is busy, keep looping back and forth. And this runs thousands of times per second while it's waiting for the browser to be done hit F8, you can see it jumps out of that loop because it sees the browser is done. And then here's where the tricky part comes in. We want to find a way to identify the search box and put this text inside that search box and then press this button. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out how do we tell what this search box is. 
And once we do that, we'll take the contents of these two cells and drop it in there. So this little bit of code right here is what I came up with to identify this box. Now how did I identify that? Well, I looked at the code and I got that elements ID and I'll show you how I did that using the document inspector. Internet Explorer has a decent document inspector. If you right click the element you want to look at, click on inspect element, you can see it highlights that element as an input tag with the name of Q, a couple different classes associated with it, and it has an ID. If it has an ID, that's the easiest, so we just grab that and copy it. But instead of using Internet Explorer's document inspector, I like Firefox. Let's just go to Firefox, look at the same page, and make sure you have the Firebug add-on installed. If you don't have that, go ahead and get it. And then if I right-click on this element, Inspect with Firebug, it gives me a much more robust look. So here again I see it's an input element with that ID. The advantage of Firebug, you also have this document object model panel that gives you a lot of useful information and in subsequent videos we'll really make use of this panel. But here again I see there's an ID search underscore form underscore input underscore homepage. And so with this line of code I'm saying Internet Explorer on the web page you just pulled up look for the element with the with that ID and let's do something with its value. Its value is currently empty. Well, we're going to change that using that equal sign, and we're going to make its value the contents of those two cells. Once I click F8, I can see it populated that element's value, and now I just need to click that button right there to return the search results. Here again, I go to Firebug, and I right-click that element, inspect with Firebug, and there I can see it also has an ID very handy. I'll go ahead and copy that and I'll paste that right here and now I'll use the dot click method to automatically click that element and once I hit F8 here I can see that it does in fact click it it brings back a page of search results even though it only takes one or two seconds to bring up that search result I need to stall the code using one of these loops again now I hit F8 it's, the page is no longer busy so I jump out of that loop Y equal to the value 2 this brings me to the for next loop this is kinda where all the magic happens once I navigated to that page, and once it loaded, VBA loaded this entire web page into memory. It already knows every element on the page, their IDs, their class names, everything associated with that web page, it already has in memory. This for next loop, we're saying, let's make a collection of elements. You see it's plural, elements. They have a class name of result underscore underscore A. Count those and put them in a bucket. And then now let's look at each one, one at a time, using the variable ALE. So what I had to know in advance before I wrote this line is that each search result had a class of result underscore underscore A. How did I know that? Well, again, I used Firebug, copy, and I used the Firebug inspector, and I looked at these lines by right-clicking on them, and I saw the A tag right here and I saw it had a class of result underscore underscore A and there's the first thing I want is the href link and the second thing I want is the text. I can see that text actually over here in the DOM panel. If I click on the A tag I can see its text content is the second piece of information that I want. The first thing I'm doing is I'm looking at this tag I'm looking at identifying characteristics of it. I see it has a class of result underscore underscore A and now I'm thinking to myself if all of these results have that same class I have a way to hook them with VBA. So let's validate my assumption. The next link right down here. You can see how cool Firebug is. Each time I hover over something it highlights it in the window. So here's the one I want. I'm going to click into that to the same level as above. Click into the H2 tag and there it is, and it does. It has, a, it has the same class, result underscore underscore A. So I know that if I can just grab these elements on the page that have this class, I will then be able to take the href value from that element as well as its text content. I've already identified this element above as a link element. I just put that value into a variable called result. So if I hit F8, and I execute that line of code, you can see it did in fact 
put the link in there. The next thing I want to do is put the description over here. It's called Intertext. In Firebug, we saw it was called Text Content. And I could actually do that too. And if I hit F8 on that line, I can see, in fact, it did put AutoZone right over here. Now, I also want to debug print just to sort of watch the code run in the debug console. I'll go to View, Immediate Window, F8 here. I can see it actually populated down there as well to sort of watch the action of whatever's happening in your bot if you want to. I wanted to add a check to find out if this link has the word yellowpages.com in it or a shorter version yp.com tool called instring, I-N-S-T-R, which looks for a string inside a string and if it finds it, what position does it start at? If it's not in there at all, it'll bring back a zero. So when I execute this line of code, it will look and see that there's no yp.com or yellowpages.com in here. It'll bring back a zero. It'll jump out of this end if statement. And then I want to increment the row by one, just like that. I'm just going to keep hitting F8 here until I see that I have a yellow pages link. Okay, there's one right there, yellow pages. This value was greater than zero. Three represents red. On the same line, put a one there. So I'm going to go ahead and continue through. I want to run this code by itself now, but I don't want to get past this line. I'm going to put a little red dot there just by clicking right here. I'm going to click F5 to run the code all at once. And there it goes. Now it stopped right here. It's waiting for me. Application worksheet sum function. It'll add up actually B2 through 100 and it'll put the value right here. If I click F8, I can see it did that. Now I can close the browser using the quit method and I end the sub with an end statement. You can see from this example just how powerful VBA is when it comes to interacting with web pages using Internet Explorer. I would encourage you to analyze this code line by line with me on automatetheweb.net. Thanks and we'll see you next time.